All right, welcome back, man, to Niobe Comics. Doing another video here. Uh, this time, uh, the source is Ben Dunn. Of course, we all know Ben Dunn, the founder of Antarctic Press, the creator of Ninja High School, the man that has given us a place on the shelf. Thank you, Mr. Ben Dunn. He's uh, commenting, doing some commentary here on the post that Gail Simone had done there a couple days ago, one which I covered on this channel. She had listed five things that she believes uh, could be done to save the comic book industry as we know it. What's really interesting is, is that these pros who initially believed a few years, you know, just even a few years ago, not even that far back, that there was nothing wrong with the comic book industry. That the comic book industry was alive and thriving and doing very well. It seems to be that that's no longer the case. As we got Gail Simone and Mark Millar and a few others chirping about the state of comics. So let's see what Ben Dunn, a man who's got 38 plus years experience in this industry, has to say. And I quote, I will read. A lot is being made about a list that Gail Simone put out that she thinks uh, that need to be done to save the comic book industry. Well, I think there are some good points there. I think there are some fundamental things that I believe will actually improve the industry. Here's my own list on how I believe uh, will improve the industry in no particular order. So Ben Dunn here has seven things he's listed. So he says, eliminate exclus I can never say this word right, exclusivity to distributors. One of the worst things that happens in the industry is when Marvel attempted to distribute their own comics and thus causing a, a cascade of exclusivity. I can't say the word, man. That killed competition in the direct market. Apparently, no one has learned this lesson. So if, if things are going to be exclusive, right, then you're obviously limiting uh, who can play in the sandbox. And we want as many people, right, playing in the sandbox as possible. Number two, go back to editors accepting open submissions to find the next generation of talent, both Marvel and DCU agents, and no longer foster any uh, new in-house talent. This creates a stagnant talent pool. Yeah, you need to find the next superstars for sure, right? But here's the thing. I think the next superstars are smart enough to not lend the pencil to a page rate and that the next superstars are just going to create their own thing and cash in big. Um, Number three, to Marvel and DC give creators a share of the success and ownership. That way, uh, both benefit on new ideas. So I'm not sure how they actually do that. I do know that uh, if you watch enough fans, Skyver and his crew, that some of those former DC artists do get royalties from trade paperbacks, from video games, from movies of the characters that they've created. Now, I don't know how that works in Marvel at all. And I'm not even sure of the details in DC, but I do know that some of that has been happening. Number four, expand the distribution. One of the worst things that happened to comics was abandon newsstands and bookstores and go all in on the direct market. Spinner racks uh, need to make return as well as point of sales. So yeah, it'd be cool to see uh, comic books sold in other places other than comic book shops. And every now and then I do see like, oh, you know, I'll be in the local bookstore and there's a few comics there, but not much, right? Or you'll be in the, you know, like the chapters or Barnes and Nobles in some people's uh, areas. And you might see a comic there, but not, not often. More or less what you will see though is trade paperbacks and graphic novels. And a lot of manga. I just don't think floppies would do well in that market. I think people are... are um, you know, past, of, you know, not going to buy floppies in a bookstore. If it looks more like a book, they'll probably buy it. But a floppy looks almost like a magazine leaflet at this point to them. Number five is the big one, though. Cover prices are too damn high. Comics are impulse buys and should remain so. So the cheapest you're going to get a comic book now might be $3.99, $4.99, uh, somewhere around that that price range. And we're just talking if you go into the shop. We're not even talking about if you're buying off a of Kickstarter, which a lot of people do now. But how do you lower the prices of comic books when everything else is expensive, right? When your printer's charging you more, when your artists are charging you more, when the supplies you need, your mailing supplies, cost more, when shipping itself costs more how do you lower the prices and still make money but yet pay out the nose through everything once you can solve that dilemma then maybe prices could be lower bring back subscriptions both physical and digital 
I don't think anyone cares about getting subscriptions in the mail anymore. Like, you know, people would like, I think that's an old school sort of uh, thought process that doesn't really apply to the digital world, right? If you're going to subscribe to something, you're probably going to want to do it on the very cheap and you can probably do it by digital. You know, the way that Marvel would send your comic books back in the day with the subscription uh, was, was awful. You know, your comic book would come beat up. It would call folded in half. Uh, there was absolutely no protection for that comic book. It's not like they were like putting them in a bag and board, wrapping them up in bubble wrap and throwing it in a Gemini. No, 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 no. Uh, that's not the way they came at all. So I just don't think people will be interested in subscription for physical floppies. I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, number seven, do not insult the fans ever. That's a hard one for creators, right? And I don't mean like... Uh, that's like a hard philosophy to follow. I just mean people are people. And people have, you know, like Ben had mentioned, you know, impulse buys. Well, people have what's called impulse reactions, right? We always say that knee-jerk reaction, you know. I'm guilty of it. You're guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. So when, you know, a fan says something insulting to you, I think the impulse reaction is to insult back. So I'm not sure how that one's going to work because that one would have been easier 20 years ago before the onslaught of social media, right? Or if you really want to have an interaction with the creator, it had to be done in one of three ways. You know, you would have to give them a phone call, you would write them a letter, or somehow you would have to run into these people in person, usually at a convention. But now we can just insult people in five seconds or less on Facebook and let the whole world know that we've done it. Not necessarily a good thing. Uh, so that's what Ben thinks will help bring back the comic book industry. What do you think? Anything else you would add or change he would like to know? Now, there's 31 comments on here. We're going to have a look at a few of them. But before we do, let me sort of go through my sort of initial uh, reaction impressions of this. I think um, that Diamond had a monopoly and that monopoly is crumbling. And we do need to be in Lunar, Penguin Random House, whatever distribution is available to us. I know Antarctic Press has a deal where we're actually being distributed into dispensaries on spinner racks. It's a handful of stores, but it's a start, right? It's another place where people can go in that area to pick up comics and some cool comics at that, mind you. I do think price is an issue. I don't know how you're going to lower it, but it needs to be lowered. At the same time, I think creators need to be paid more though. So how do you do that, right? You know, when you're on the, the shelf and you're selling a book and the profit that you make back from that book doesn't even cover the cost to create the book. What is the incentive for the creator to keep going? We need to get paid too, right? It's like the starving artist is always the last person to get paid. And I think that's why so many of us have gone to the crowdfunding route as opposed to being published and only being published because if the sales aren't there, then you can't pay the bills. You can't put a roof over your head and you can't put food on the table, right? You got no money in your pocket. And yet you dumped what money you did have in your pocket all into this book. So there has to be a payoff somewhere for both publisher, the fan, and the creator, you know? I also think um, <clears throat> that comic book companies need to adopt a, uh, a rule in regards to political issues, okay? controversial issues that I think, uh, you know, if I was like the head of DC, that there needs to be a line drawn on pushing the envelope on controversy. I would say to the staff that we are not a left wing or a right wing publication. We are just a publication for every citizen to enjoy. And in order to do that, you have to give content for every citizen to enjoy, not just the LGTBQ. I'm just going to come out and say it. You know what I mean? Right? There's more, you know, they're a very small demographic in the grand scheme of the world of comic book buyers. And half of them don't even buy comic books because they don't have money. It's just, just the way it is. So you need to appeal to the people who brought you to the dance in the first place, which is guys like me. Uh, that's just the way it is. Um, you know, if you are working with the big two, yes, getting royalties are nice, and I think that should happen. Uh, what else could we do to save the comic book industry? 
mm, uh, you know, not insulting fans. I, you know, you know the drama, right? But in in some cases, the drama sort of brings in sales for some people, and for other people, it just makes them look bad. So if you can stay out of it, try your best to, you know, keep the keep the focus, stay on target, as they would say in Star Wars, right? But let's see what the uh, what everyone else has to say. Maybe it'll spark more ideas in me. Okay, so here's the comments. Uh, Damien says, I can add a solid distro model for a subscription. After years of wanting a physical sub to a comic, I finally get one from Marvel. It almost took two years to get a six-issue comic sent to me in full. Yeah, and I bet you they didn't come in mint condition. People got to remember, when you buy comic books, the average comic book collector wants mint condition. Like 9.8s. Every comic, where the guys that they're going to be worth money or not. I'm like that. I don't like buying comics that I can tell, uh, you know, like with just an eye view that they're not mint, right? If I see dings, if I see dents, if I see a bent corner, if I see a ripple in the, you know, in the cover, you know, I'm trying not to buy that. If it's a back issue, that might be a different story, especially if it's you know near and dear to my heart or it's hard to find or the price is right. But as regarding, you know, just buying brand new comics on Wednesday, I want mint, period, and a story. Uh, Brian Love says, I agree. I miss walking into a gas station or a country store or some places you wouldn't normally think to buy comics from and they would have a few on the newsstand or magazine rack. It was a great on those long car trips to find a place that sold comics, giving you something to read on your family trips as a kid. Well, the thing is, the way I understand it, and maybe it's changed and someone can let me know in the, you know, in the comments, but Diamond does not buy back comics you cannot sell, right? And that's why there's such a huge issue uh, with sort of like, uh, you know, smaller shops and whatnot getting comics. Because if they did buy some comics and they can't sell, normally you can sell them back, right? You can you can return them. But now you can't. So you're stuck with these things. And that's why so many comic books, by the way, end up in the dollar bin. Even if they just came out like a few months ago. Because chances are the store ordered more than what they needed. Thinking they were going to sell, hoping they were going to sell, and they don't sell. So now they're in the dollar bin. They're just trying to get whatever they can for them because they're, they're already bought. So that is already a loss. And they're just trying to recoup some of that loss, you know. Uh, Benjamin says, and I don't know if this makes sense, but I'll try and read it anyway. What size of us thinks she DPS? just now coming to list of complaints that comics gay people had for years next thing you know she's going to complain about how hard it is for a woman to date after 40 i'm not here to insult the woman personally right uh i actually met her in 2011 she was nice to me i don't know if that would be the case now since the world's gotten more polarized this person says i 100 percent agree especially on spinner racks i would not gotten the comics of the local corner store if uh if one there if, if it didn't have one there when i was growing up fair enough and true enough but we live in a different world now right back in the days of the spinner racks the internet didn't exist say that the internet did exist would you be buying off of the spinner rack or would you just be reading them from free off of some website somewhere that's really the question you got to ask yourself that's sort of what you're competing against is piracy uh you know digital comics being uh traded back and forth webtoons tapas things of that nature right um uh, bye boy here says kids today do read and consume a lot of youth oriented literature from ya books to manga or non-superhero comics uh they even even if they are made affordable and available they're just not reading cape comics that's that kind of comic books increasingly becoming it's just something old dudes read and collect. Yeah, I, I see a lot of kids looking at the comic book format itself, just the way the comic books are shaped, sized, produced, as uh, as dated to them. You know, it's old, right? Uh, but, you know, there is some pushback on this one. He says, I don't necessarily agree. My nephew seems to be in the superhero comics. Um, My Hero Academia is still pretty popular, though. I think the problem is that too many superhero comics have gotten too dark, serious, and not... Many fun comics are coming out. That's what kids like. Fun, exciting stories and characters. <clears throat> the response to that is, yeah, mainstream hero comics are too hard to get into. And there's an over-reliance on lore to make the stories make sense. My Hero Academia is a good example of how to do a superhero story that appeals to kids. Well, I mean, it's something that they can jump into from the start. 
you know, even when I was collecting comics, there was really nothing to get into at the start. You know, even Spider Man, X Men, and Batman, you know, were well into you know two, three hundred issues, maybe more. But half the fun of that was going back and discovering the things that came before your jumping in point and learning. But um, I don't know if kids have uh, the patience for that, you know, uh, in this day and age. Carlos Tron says, I couldn't agree more. It takes knowledge of how the comic book market has changed in the past 30 something years. 1986 probably being the best years for the industry. Also had lots of love for this medium to get to your conclusions. That is the way. This is the way. Ian McIntosh, if fans attack creators like the Comicscape people do creators, should be able to defend themselves. Yeah. Uh, Brian Davis, yes uh, to all of it. Marvel and DC is much respect to the artists and writers. This seems to just keep reusing and spinning back up the same things over and over again with a, a very small fence. So here's the thing. These comic book heroes like Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, etc., they're not just, you know, what's current and trending anymore, right? These, these these are fables now in our lexicon, in the zeitgeist. These are like Greek heroes and gods whose tales are never going to stop, but probably are going to repeat over and over again. I do agree we need new, exciting characters. I do agree it's time to move on from uh, the heroes that were created in the 1930s and 40s. Which is why you should buy Niobe. Quick shell. Peter Bro says, great ideas. <clears throat> Timothy Lim uh, has a couple of things here um, that he's commenting on. So, Timothy Lim, of course, common America fame. He says, <clears throat> in regards to number two, open submissions, I think, are largely closed due to the potential for litigation. Unsolicited ideas that are con uh, coincidentally similar to yours can be seen as plagiarized. It's one of the reasons why we don't listen to anyone's story ideas or do portfolio reviews at conventions. Number five, cover prices are largely determined by the price of printing. So this is going back to what I was saying. Like if everything costs more, how are you going to lower the price, right? Going back to cheaper paper quality or even black and white are options for lowering this. But will also require a change in how comics are perceived, a collector's hobby versus a reader's hobby. And that's sort of the big debate, right? And I like to do a, a whole show on that, a collector's hobby versus a reader's hobby. Because I do read, but I'm also a collector. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of this one. <clears throat> but I can definitely see how it's more of a collector's hobby these days as, in regards to strictly collecting floppies than it is a reader's hobby. If you're buying omnibuses and trades, then you're a reader. If you're buying floppies for first appearances and the hot variant and you're selling on eBay, you're a collector. Of course, most of us are somewhere in between, but this will still require accepting uh, a degree of physical change to make it work unless paper prices just happen to plummet dramatically. And they won't. Nothing's going to go down in price, right? When has anything really gone down in price for any substantial amount of time to make a difference? Uh, so Alan says uh, to Tim, manga does this and the fans don't care. Cheaper paper all the time and even black and white. And Tim says, I know I only read manga, but some American comic readers, as I mentioned, have a collector's mindset and may scoff at the notion of reduced paper quality or black and white. And they absolutely will, right? Especially if there's paying the same amount. Uh, we see this with negative reactions to companies printing their cover stock to match interiors. Uh, John Epel. As much as I agree with this, it makes so much sense they won't do it. Um, there's a lot here from Alan. I'll read them and then uh, we'll maybe look at one more and sort of put this to rest. Uh, my response to your comments, uh, number one, spot on. Nothing has destroyed the direct market more than Marvel's selfish and greedy Heroes World debacle that led to DC signing with Diamond exclusively and with the big two tied up killed all competition for distribution and plummet uh and service plummet and the 70 percent plus of the shops closed which meant discovery was a lot less likely number two yes but we need the old editors back and no more agenda driven uh, editors this is where i said like you know you sort of need a, like a political uh stop line we need the ones who love comics and the characters and want to remain for everyone yeah number three Yes, the indies are, hits are so rare, making it financially rewarding for the 
for the creators to stay. Four, yes again, manga that does this well, even having black and white giant mags in the bookstores. Number five, I agree again, uh, these were meant to be cheap disposable entertainment and they have increased in costs far greater than other sources of entertainment. I used to be able to buy all Marvel and DC lines with just with my allowance. Digital is even more so. That's because they're not cheap disposable entertainment anymore, right? And this goes back to the collector's mindset. These uh, books that you're buying, a lot of people consider them to be uh, either short-term investments for the flip on eBay or whatnot, or long-term investments that they put away in a long box and hope to, to liquidate someday. Number six, a no-brainer and, uh, and make them the same. If you buy the physical distribution and get the digital ones too so they can get hooked on their iPhones and tablets. Listen, right? When we were born, and I mean like, you know, people who are Gen X or older, we weren't born with a cell phone shoved in our hands or in our face right away. But kids today are, especially kids in the last 10 to 12 years have been, right? Uh, you know, I know three-year-olds that can work a tablet better than I ever could. And this is how they consume media. To them, this is just like watching the TV, right? So it does have to appeal to them. Six, a no-brainer and make them the same. If you buy, okay, I read that one. Uh, number seven, big capital, yes. And stop with the arrogant view of we know better because we actually write, etc., which is nonsense. M many fans actually know far more than the writers and artists. Don't insult your customers. For now, we need more outlets and we need to make stores able to succeed. Capital use Capital used to have local pickup centers where the stores could go and pick up books and reorders. This helped a lot. I add that comics, especially the big two superhero stuff, should be all ages and appeal and appeal to the escapist fans, not just one people who feel like you dividing and alienating half of an audience for struggling industry is insane. Finally, we need a replacement and a better version of comicology. Well, I think we have that in a sense with global comics. I don't, you know, I don't think you can get physical comics from them, but you can certainly go and read all the all the digital comics to your heart's content. Um, number seven here says Ronald should be on a plaque in every editor's office. Remember, no fans, no comics. They only want the fans so that think like they do, right? I had this argument with Heather Antos, you know, and um, to them, they don't want quote unquote fascists reading their comics. And you're only a fascist if they disagree with you. Uh, Charles Ben Jones Art says, I think the real question and answer is why is manga thriving and Western comics still on life support? Answer that question. You have everything you need to make Western comics prosper. It's the appeal. It's the fact that these kids are seeing a lot more anime than we did when we were younger. Like when I was younger, you would have to put two VCRs together and dub some anime. Now these kids just have to turn on Crunchyroll or Netflix or go on their Roku and, uh, and, and see what's up for anime. Uh, you know, they're so inundated by it, you know, starting with like things like Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon, and then they sort of graduate and, and evolve from there. I remember when I was 16, I thought anime was cooler than, uh, than the uh, Western stuff. It's just, it's just the aesthetic, right? Um, Charles uh, says, uh, great questions because the escape is fun and stories end for the most part. Even if they include something like a gay character or story, it's not preachy about the gays. It's still entertaining like my boyfriend gay is a vampire, stuff like that. And we're always thinking about hooking you up and, and entertaining you. If they put it everywhere like Webtoons, it doesn't hurt sales at all. Um, <clears throat> we'll read uh, one more here. <clears throat> excuse me, middle grade and uh, YA graphic novels have found the audience that DC and Marvel no longer make comics for. Superheroes once made up 30% of comics with humor and comics towards younger viewers were the majority. It's misleading, misleading to say that kids don't read comics. Rather, most kids do not read superhero comics and that's okay. Superheroes are a very niche genre. You would think Right, that there was one sort of genre that would appeal to kids. I know it certainly appealed to me when I was a kid. Was the superhero genre? It was the fact that you could be something uh, extraordinary. You know, every kid, you know, when I was younger, wanted to be Spider Man, wanted to be Batman, wanted to be Superman. It was the thing. You know, it was like the fantasy of every young boy. 
Traditional publishers have identified this deficiency and are appealing to those readers that the big two have left behind. That's why I read more independent these days. I like the superhero genre, but too much of the same gets old for myself. Pizza's my favorite food, but I only get tired of it after day four. Yeah. Um, Larry F. Houston. Number three is critical. Who wants to create a new IP for either of them without fair participation? For free. Not the smart creators. They know about the unfair history of both Superman's creators and Jack Kirby. Co-creator just about everything, all things Marvel. It's true. Right? You don't want to be the guy that makes the billion dollar character and then get pennies in return. <clears throat> so I think that pretty much covers it, guys. Let me know what you think. What is your list of how to save the comic book industry? I think everyone's got ideas, but no one really knows for sure what the magic answer is. Because I'll tell you, I don't think there is a magic answer. I think the industry is on death's doorstep and I'm in it. Right? I will be the last guy on the sinking ship. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I do think things need to change. I think times change. I think technology changes. And I think that changes how we consume media. But at the same time, I'm so old school. You know, I'm like the, you know, it says right on my Facebook, I'm the last rebel in comics, right? I'm the last guy that's going to come from that old school sort of train of thought and continue to publish that way. And I think that alone makes me unique because everyone's going to try and change to the digital world. And while we do offer digital comics, I'm going to produce the floppies and, uh, and put them out through the traditional means, even if it means the death of me. <laughs> so this is LP for Niobe. Let me know again what you think. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here and stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Peace.